28, 29, 30. 30 unpopped kernels in a bag of 376 kernels. Yes, I counted. That's almost 8% of my popcorn that's inedible, unless you're this guy. And that's actually a little bit better than the published average that 10 to 12% of the kernels in a bag of microwave popcorn will not pop. But it turns out that those unpopped kernels are basically inevitable, and weirdly, maybe even desirable. This is Minute Food. I'm gonna preface this video with the fact that I am a popcorn fiend. There is almost nothing else I'd rather eat. So those little jerks that refuse to pop, no matter how I cook the popcorn and how well I follow the directions, have always really frustrated me. I mean, science is capable of unbelievable things. We can put humans in space, cure all sorts of deadly diseases, and literally rewrite our DNA. Why can't a real genius figure out how to make popcorn that all actually pops? It turns out that the answer to that question starts here. A kernel of popcorn is basically a bunch of starch and a little bit of water surrounded by a hard shell, which popcornologists call the pericarp, but you'll generally hear referred to as the hull. And it's the hull that makes popcorn special, because unlike other varieties of corn, which have pretty thin, weak hulls that make for tender eating, a popcorn kernel's hull is way stronger and thicker. When you heat up that kernel, the starch inside starts to gelatinize. It basically turns to goo. And the water inside starts turning to steam. But the super strong hull keeps holding everything together, allowing pressure to build up inside. Like, a lot of pressure. A popcorn kernel is basically an itty-bitty pressure cooker. Except that most pressure cookers generally function at around 15 PSI. But the average popcorn kernel can withstand an internal pressure of more than 130 PSI before its thick hull finally fails. Once that happens, the starchy goo explodes into a foam, which almost immediately cools down and solidifies. Depending on the direction and speed at which the foam expands, you can actually get four distinct popcorn shapes. If it expands more or less equally in all directions, you'll get this, the mushroom. This shape is rare in home and theater popcorn. You'll mostly see it made into flavored popcorn because it's super sturdy. Instead, the starch in most commercial popcorn kernels expands more chaotically, creating a shape known in the popcorn biz as a butterfly. But butterflies can actually take on three distinct subshapes. Even weirder is that these different shapes are markedly different in their texture, the amount of oil and salt they tend to pick up, and even their chemical composition, which means that the proportion of the various shapes you get in a batch can really affect your eating experience. As a complete popcorn goblin, I am totally obsessed with this info. But these kernels aren't actually what we're interested in here. We want to know what's going on with these, the kernels that don't pop. There are a bunch of names out there for these stubborn kernels, but they're all weirdly sexist. So we're just gonna call them no pops. And one possibility is that no pops are damaged in some way. Like maybe they have cracks or holes that preclude this pressurizing process, prohibiting them from popping. But studies have found that most kernels with this kind of damage actually do pop when heated. Although because their weakened hulls can't withstand very much pressure, the starch doesn't expand that much. They'll often end up as these like half popped flakes. In any case, unpopped kernels probably aren't the result of damage. In fact, most no-pops will actually pop if you heat them up again, which suggests that the first time, they simply didn't reach that thermodynamic tipping point at which the hull fails and the starch can expand. Sometimes that happens, or doesn't happen really, because of natural variation. Some kernels just require more pressure to pop. But a kernel not reaching its popping potential can also be a result of technique. Like on a stovetop, if you heat up the kernels unevenly or too quickly, some will pop and risk scorching before others get hot enough to pop at all. And in a microwave, kernels often get stuck along edges and in corners where they don't receive enough reflected energy to heat up and pop. Microwaves tend to leave behind the most unpopped kernels out of any cooking method. So if you're looking for maximum poppage, skip the microwave. But even with perfect popping technique, it is still unlikely that all the kernels will reach the popping threshold. And that's because the popcorn industry isn't optimizing for 100% poppage. Instead, their obsession is expansion. Basically how much a given amount of kernels puffs up during popping. Because the more popcorn expands, the fewer kernels are needed to fill up that bucket or that bag, and the bigger the profits are. The number of no-pops obviously does play into expansion, but the expansion potential of popcorn is so great, a kernel can expand in volume by as much as 50 times, that a little bit more expansion can make up for some completely unpopped kernels. 
Plus, expansion affects taste, too. Popcorn eaters tend to rate bigger, fluffier flakes as more delicious. So popcorn breeders and buyers want kernels that are going to expand the most. But the traits that lead to maximum expansion don't necessarily lead to maximum poppage. Like, studies have found that medium-sized kernels actually expand more than larger or smaller kernels. But mid-sized kernels leave behind way more unpopped kernels than larger-sized kernels do. Hull strength matters too. Super strong, thick hulls can build up a lot of pressure inside, leading to super big, fluffy flakes. But because hulked out kernels require more heat and pressure to actually burst, more of the kernels in any given batch might not reach that critical thermodynamic threshold. I did a bunch of at-home tests comparing standard commercial popcorn with what's called hullless popcorn, a specialty variety bred to have thinner, more tender hulls. And I got much lower rates of no pops with the hullless kernels compared to the commercial kernels, which we know are bred for maximum expansion. To be clear, testing these various trade-offs is really messy because there are so many variables at work, from popping technique to popcorn variety to plain old natural variation. But the data does suggest that when it comes to standard commercial popcorn, by selecting for the biggest, fluffiest flakes, breeders and buyers are almost certainly ensuring the existence of some unpopped kernels in your pot or your air popper or your microwave bag. Remember, you can't always try popping those kernels again. The literature suggests that more than three quarters of unpopped kernels will pop the second time. And in my at-home tests, I've gotten even better numbers. But honestly, unless you are a real stickler about food waste or have a ton of time on your hands, popcorn is so cheap and available that trying to get every kernel popped probably isn't worth it. Plus, I've actually come around to appreciating those stubborn little no-pops because their existence likely means a bigger, fluffier, tastier bowl of popcorn. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of popcorn to eat. Ooh, is that a multilateral butterfly? And check out that giant. If you're like me, after you make it out of an intense work-related rabbit hole, like sifting through the massive amount of scientific literature on exactly how much popcorn fluffs up, you often need something to help you decompress. And Merge Cooking, which sponsored this video, is just that. By merging items, you get to cook foods from all around the world, fulfill customers' orders, and renovate themed restaurants from Paris to Tokyo. It is a great way to relax and relieve stress anywhere, anytime, for free. You don't even need Wi-Fi. If you love merge games, or if you've never tried them but you have a perfectionist streak, or love brain-teasing puzzles, give Merge Cooking a try. You can download it at the QR code or link on screen and in the description. Don't forget to enter the gift code MINUTE. Plus, by checking it or any of our other sponsors out, you will also be supporting us here at Minute Food. So thanks to you and to Merge Cooking.